Welcome back to the archives. Today's chapter will be a little different. We will be retelling the final stages of the Horus Heresy from the perspective of a few different characters. Keep listening to find out how the battle between the Emperor and his traitorous son, Horus, ends. The clash between two brothers, the traitor Horus Lupercal and the great Archangel Sanguinius, was reaching its conclusion. Sanguinius, noble and resplendent, faced his brother turned foe with steely resolve. Horus, twisted by corruption, radiated malevolence like a dark star, his eyes gleaming with a savage hunger for power. Sanguinius fought with the grace of a dancer and the ferocity of a wounded lion, his every movement a symphony of power and desperation. Yet, for all his valor, he is but a mortal among demigods, and the weight of his destiny bears down upon him like a mountain. Horus, a master manipulator, striked with cunning precision, exploiting every weakness with ruthless efficiency. His blows rain down like a storm of fire and steel, each strike driving deeper into the heart of his brother's resolve. And then, in a single moment, Sanguinius falls. His wings, once a symbol of hope and salvation, now crumple beneath the weight of his broken body. The galaxy held its breath as the echoes of his demise rippled across the stars, a requiem for a hero lost to the darkness. As the life ebbed from his noble form, a psychic shockwave bursts forth, tearing through the minds of all who can perceive it. The death scream echoed a cacophony of anguish and despair that reverberated through the very fabric of existence. It was an eternal wail, haunting the souls of Sanguinius children for all eternity, a mournful dirge for their fallen Primarch. The Blood Angels, once proud and noble, are consumed by the infernal wrath unleashed by their beloved father's demise. The Black Rage, a curse as ancient as time itself, seized them in its merciless grip, twisting their minds and souls into instruments of madness. Hell breaks loose amidst the ranks of the Blood Angels as they succumb to the savage fury of the Black Rage. Like a tide of chaos unleashed upon the cosmos, they break rank and descend into a frenzied rampage, transforming into the avatars of destruction. Like wildfire fueled by grief, news of Sanguinius's tragic demise spread. On Terra, amidst the hallowed halls of the Imperial Palace, the Primarch Rogel Dorn stood like a sentinel of defiance against the encroaching darkness. Beside him stood Acte, a perpetual being shrouded in mystery and unknown loyalties. Her immortal gaze meets his, bearing the weight of a truth too bitter to swallow. She delivered grim tidings. Sanguinius, the paragon of virtue, had fallen, his noble spirit snuffed out by the treachery of his brother, Horus. But Dorn, resolute in his defiance, refused to yield to despair. Ignoring Acte's dire warning, he vowed to confront the traitor Warmaster head-on, his resolve unshakable in the face of overwhelming darkness. He bequeathed upon Acte his seal of authority, a symbol of his unwavering commitment to the cause of the Imperium. He charged her with the solemn duty to spread the word, to rally the scattered remnants of loyalists and ignite the flames of rebellion against the encroaching tide of treachery. It was a message of defiance, a clarion call to all who would stand in the face of tyranny and oppression. The Emperor must live, for the Emperor is mankind, and mankind is the Emperor. Aboard the vengeful spirit, the Emperor of mankind stood amidst a sea of chaos, his psychic might cutting through the ranks of word-bearers like a scythe through wheat. He strode purposefully towards the court, a chamber steeped in treachery. There, amidst the shadows, he beheld a sight that chilled him to the core of his immortal soul. Sanguinius, his beloved son, hung suspended upon the wall like a trophy, his lifeless form a stark reminder of the horrors that have transpired. The Emperor's expression remained stoic, betraying none of the turmoil that raged within him. With a commanding gesture, he directed his allies to take down the fallen angel. As he stood vigil over Sanguinius's body, Horus arrived upon the scene. The Emperor's gaze met his, a silent question hanging between them like a veil of shadow. Why? 
the Emperor asked calmly, a deceptively tranquil surface masking the tempest that raged beneath. Horus begun to respond, his words tinged with the bitter taste of betrayal. He spoke of the offer made to Sanguinius and his rejection, but the Emperor's attention was not directed towards his wayward son standing before him. Instead, his gaze pierced the veil of reality itself, reaching out to the unseen forces that lurked in the shadows beyond. He was speaking to the Chaos Gods, ancient and inscrutable, watched the unfolding conflict with a perverse delight, their whispers echoing through the void like the siren song of madness. And at that moment, Horus committed the first strike. With a single blow, he shattered the fragile facade of order, casting the universe into chaos and uncertainty. Reality broke entirely, a shattered mirror reflecting the fractured remnants of a world torn asunder by the ambitions of gods and men alike. The duel between Horus and the Emperor transcended the confines of physical space, spiraling into a battle of psychic warfare where memories became weapons and time itself was a battlefield for their conflict. Memories of battles long past intertwined with the present, weaving a tale of bloodshed and triumph that spanned the breadth of existence. From the desolate streets of Chthonia to the bastions of Cadia, they fought with a fervor born of centuries of enmity. Horus emerged victorious from many of these battles. Yet for every triumph, the Emperor countered with a display of unfathomable power, his resolve unyielding in the face of adversity. As the conflict reached its zenith, the boundaries between the physical and psychic realm blurred, reality itself unraveling. In this surreal realm of abstract thought and raw emotion, the final confrontation commenced. A game of tarot cards became the dueling grounds upon which their fates would be decided. Horus, with a deck forged in the fires of chaos, laid waste to the Emperor's defenses. His every move calculated with the precision of a master strategist. In a decisive moment, Horus seized the opportunity to strike, catching the Emperor off guard. With a triumphant roar, he crushed his foe beneath the weight of his overwhelming power. As the Emperor fell, his tarot cards scattered like leaves in the wind, each one a fragment of his shattered legacy. The Guardsman, the Throne, the Space Marine, the Knight, the Lantern, and the Revelation, each card a reminder of the Empire that once was. Amidst the wreckage of their battle, Horus drags the Emperor's body to an empty throne seat, his mind teeming with dark intentions of usurpation and whispered promises to the malevolent entities that lurk in the shadows. Yet despite the Emperor's weakened state, his spirit remained unbroken, a flickering flame of defiance. With every push from Horus, he rises again, a testament of his will that burns within like a beacon of hope. In a moment of desperate salvation, Ollie and John Grammaticus tear open a portal back to the Emperor's side, their arrival a harbinger of hope. To their surprise, the Emperor lied battered and unconscious upon the ground. Terrified by the unexpected turn of events, John speaks a word of power, a primal force that blasts Horus back with a surge of otherworldly energy. As Ollie sends Grammaticus away to complete their mission, he places the Athame dagger in the Emperor's hand, a plea for him to awaken from his slumber and reclaim his rightful place as the savior of mankind. But Horus, undeterred by their efforts, begins to advance once more. In a desperate bid to protect his fallen master, Ali brandishes his laser rifle, its crimson beam slicing through the air. With a final defiant roar, Ali unleashes a torrent of energy until he's obliterated by a single strike from Horus. Within the depths of Horus's soul, where traces of humanity still lingered, the Emperor coaxed Horus into believing his victory was assured. With honeyed words, he urged Horus to relinquish the shackles of chaos, to demonstrate his autonomy from its seductive grasp. And in a fleeting moment of vulnerability, Horus obliged, surrendering his newfound power to prove that he's not enslaved. The Emperor seized the opportunity, bolstered by the fervent prayers echoing across the expanse of the Imperium. Whispers, soft yet insistent, echoed within Horus's mind, a cacophony of voices pleading for the Emperor's survival. Desperation clawed at Horus's consciousness as he scrambled to reclaim the dark energies he had so recklessly cast aside. In the midst of chaos, 
A shard of clarity pierced through the haze, shrouding Horus's thoughts. He recognized himself as naught but a pawn of chaos, a vessel hollowed by its corrupting influence. Silently, he begged his father for mercy. I forgive you, the Emperor's voice. A lamentation heavy with sorrow and finality, as he plunged the Athami dagger into his son's heart. And thus, amidst the throes of battle, the Emperor extinguished the flickering ember of Horus's existence, a requiem for a fallen son. Exhausted and drained of all his energy, the Emperor collapses. The end and the death is many ends and many deaths, but above all, it is the end of the Emperor's vision and the death of humankind. It is the death of peace and the end of reason. It is the death of hope and the end of rational thought. It is the end of victory and the death of innocence. The never-born now are, and they will never leave the minds of men. It is the dawn of a new millennium that brings only war into the grim darkness of the far future. On the vengeful spirit, Rogel Dawn deliberated over the fate of the Emperor. He stumbled upon the deck of tarot cards. With furrowed brows, he traced the remaining cards, seeking guidance in their cryptic symbols, and interpreted their elusive dance as a plea to seat the Emperor upon the throne, a last-ditch effort to salvage what remained of his shattered spirit. Meanwhile, amidst the echoing corridors, Loken, one of the last surviving sons of Horus, refused to return to Terra with the other participants of the battle. Instead, he stood sentinel over the fallen Horus, his vigil a silent testament to loyalty. In time, Abaddon and his brethren descended upon the scene and encountered Loken. He declared his intent not to spill Loken's blood. A gesture of mercy, perhaps, but he gave Loken the choice to follow them or leave peacefully. With resolve etched upon his brow, Loken vowed to seek amnesty and forgiveness from Rogal Dorn on their behalf. Yet, many in that room doubted that Dorn or Robute Gilliman would ever allow it. However, before the first step of his journey could be taken, Erebus, a harbinger of darkness, emerged from the shadows and plunged his blade of treachery into Loken. Abaddon could not kill Erebus for his treason as he understood his actions were the only way they could survive. Erebus then murmurs his venomous whispers, painting the sorrow of the loss of Horus as passing grief, a mere ripple in the vast ocean of time. This concludes today's chapter from the archives. Please like and subscribe if you want more. Leave a comment on which chapter we should reveal from the archives next.